This week we're going to take a look at an interesting use case with uh, Power Automate Flows and Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations. So what came up this week was I had a user that wanted a report. It's a, this is going to be a warehouse management process, but uh, it doesn't have to be warehouse management. But they wanted a report that when they did a cycle count, they wanted a report of the variances each week. So what, what variances are occurred? So what I mean by variances, is, you know, if the system said 100 and the user counted 90, they wanted that to show in a report so they could tell what, what, what the variances were that were recorded. So they could go back maybe and double check them through the week, make sure that if there's any large variances, they can go double check those, okay? So again, this is a warehouse management example, but it, it, it really doesn't, you really don't have to use this just for warehouse management, okay? So that process, there's really not a standard report we can use for that. But uh, what I did is I looked in and I found an entity that, that I could use for it to report on it. Okay, so I was able to create a flow that used that report to, or use that data to create a report for us and email it to the user. Now, I will say too, you don't actually have to email it to the user. Once you get it into Flow, you can do anything you want to with it. You, know, you can post it to Teams or, or just anything Flow will do. You can, uh, once you get it in there, you can do it. All right. So let's go ahead and take a look at what I'm talking about here, the example. Um, if we go into um, finance and operations, and we're going to go into warehouse management, and then we're going to go to cycle counting, and then let's look at closed cycle count work. So what I want to do is I want to look um, at any variance that's been in the past seven days. Let me show you what I mean by variance. If I click on a record here, and I go to cycle counting, um, this is what the user counted. So we have item A0001, the expected quantity was 90 and they counted uh, 80. So there's a difference of 10 there that um, is a variance. And that's what we want to report on. Now the other, what we want to do too, is we, we only want to see the last 10 days. So the, when we do the report, the only record we should get is this very last one here because it's within the last, sorry, so 10 days, last seven days, okay? So we typically run this on Friday and it would pull the previous seven days, okay? All right. So, um, all right, so let's go over to Flow, or Power Automate, and so we're gonna go to make.powerops.com, and we're gonna go into our flows, and let's go into the count report. All right, I'll go ahead and edit this one. All right, so let me walk you through this flow. Now, I'm gonna be manually triggering this flow, and you see that the, the box here is manually triggered, but really, what, what we'd wanna do is we wanna schedule it, um, and that, that's real simple. You just you just find the schedule trigger and add it here, and it, it's just standard. I mean, if you've ever done a schedule, it's, it's the same thing. So you just tell it, you know, I wanna run it on Friday at eight o'clock, and that's when it'll trigger, okay? So, but for this example, I'm just gonna trigger a flow manually. So that's all I've, I've got on there. It's just gonna, when I run it, it's gonna allow me to trigger it manually. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the list of records. So here's the entity that I'm gonna use. This is Cycle Count Work V2 uh, MS ERP. This is gonna be a virtual entity I'm using. If I show the advanced options in the filter query here, I'm get using this data area ID to filter down the company. So I only want the USMF uh, records for this, for this particular report. So I'm filtering it here. I'm gonna further filter it down here in the next step, okay? So what this is gonna do is gonna go out and get the cycle count work records for this USMF um, uh, company, all right? So then let's go down and I'm filtering it further. So I'm, I'm passing the value for the list of records down into this filter array. And then I've got this kind of formula here. So let me show you, show you how I'm, what I'm doing here. And basically what this is doing is it's, it's giving me where, where the uh, date is less than, is seven days ago and the expected quantity is not equal to the counted quantity. So let me show you how I'm, I'm coming up with this here in the filter array. So I'm just gonna add a new one here. And, uh, cause it only lets, filter array only lets you do one at a time through the interface, but you can hack it here or, or add, go in the advanced mode and uh, do, add some extra uh, filters to it. So I'm gonna grab the value again from this list of records. And the way I do the multiple values is, so um, let's say, um, first thing I wanna do is I wanna add where um, the expected quantity is not equal to the counted quantity. So let's do that one first. So we'd, we'll choose expected quantity from our list records and we'll say is not equal to, then we'll, we'll pick our counted quantity from our list records. And then what I do is I go in this advanced mode here and I'm just gonna copy that for a second. So I'm just gonna copy that and I'm gonna pull up Notepad, and I'm gonna put that into Notepad and hold on to that for just a minute, okay? So then the next thing we're, what we wanna do is I want to um, 
basically look seven days back. Okay, so there's a there's a field on the um, on the work record that's called close work, and that's a date. And so what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to the expression. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to format date time because I want to return a date. And then the date that I'm going to return is I'm going to start with his add days because I want to look seven days ago. And then add days, I want to start from the UCTC, UTC now. That's today's right now. And then I want to subtract seven days. So I know it's add days, but a negative day is going to take away way days. So basically what this is going to do is it's going to return a date. And it's going to take right now and subtract seven days. Okay. And then so what I can do is I click in there, hit OK. And that's going to give us that. And then I'll come in here and I will copy that one. Okay, so I'm going to copy that one, and then I'm going to put this one into our notepad. Okay, so how we can combine these two together is basically what we need to do is we need to take away the ampersands here. So we're going to take away the at and the at, and then we're going to come down here, and then we're going to put an at, and then I want the condition to be and. So anything that's within these two parentheses is going to be an and. So it's going to, I want this is it's not equal to the expected quantity is not equal to the counted quantity and the uh, the uh, close date actually sorry I've just messed that up I just noticed hang on just a second here I messed this second one up let me I'll show you the errors and the bad mistakes here so let's uh, let me get out one for just a second and go back to edit and it, it's not as equal to is I want it greater than so this is a date so I want it greater than seven days ago so anything that's previous seven days apologize for that let's, let's go back into edit mode and I didn't think that looked right when I, when I pasted that on there all right and then let's paste that in there okay so let's get rid of that little ampersand there all right so we have our two conditions there again I apologize for that so we want this and this to be true to report on it. So all we have to do now that we remove those ampersands, we're going to copy this one, and we're going to go into this and we're going to put it there, and then we're going to put a comma, and then we're going to take this one, we're going to copy that there, and we're going to put a comma. So you can keep adding conditions here like this, um, as many as you need, um, and then I'm going to copy this, copy it, and now we can just replace that whole thing with our new formula. Okay, and that will give us both conditions. Now, at this point, when you have more than one condition, you can't go back and edit it in in in, uh, in basic mode. So once you've done it, you can't do it. Uh, can't, can't go back in basic mode, but um, but you can do exactly what I've done if you want if you need to redo anything. Okay, so I'm gonna delete this one because this is exactly what I have up there in the filter array. I'm gonna delete that one there, and then so we're filtering the array down to. Uh, where the counted quantity is not equal to expected quantity and the date has got to be greater than seven days ago. All right, so now we're going to pass that down to a select. So this is what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm pulling, getting the body from the filter array. So these are my filtered records. And these are the records that I want to be in my report. So I've got item, location, warehouse, the expected quantity, the counted quantity, and then the closed date here. Okay, so I'm just using a select. That's going to get these fields from the body that we've passed through these two uh, actions up here. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to pa get pass these fields into a create HTML table. So this is going to be the output here from the select, and that's just going to create an HTML table for. Us. There's there's no I'm not don't have anything unusual here. It's just take, creating the HTML table, and then. Here's another little tricky thing. So I've, I've added a compose here. And basically what I've done is I've added some, uh, some CSS code up here. Now, to be honest with you, I'm not a CSS guy. I, I copied this right from the internet from a, from another, uh, from a website that I found on formatting tables. So um, I, I can't explain to you exactly what all this is doing. I mean, I can read it and tell, tell kind of, you know, coloring, but I'm not a CSS guy. So just, if you're good with CSS, you know, create your own code. If not, just do what I did. Go out on the internet and find, find, some, uh, find a table you like and copy the CSS code from it. So basically the CSS code is within these style uh, tags here. So it's within those. And then I'm taking this output from this create HTML table and appending it to it. And that's going to give us our, our table data and format. 
okay so then the next thing we're going to do we'll close that down close that down is we're just going to send an email so if i click on that um, it's going to send me an email i've put a format of cycle count report and then please read the cycle count report and i've put the outputs from the compose into the email okay so let's do this let's go ahead and run this i'll save that and let's just uh we'll trigger it we'll say test it and save and test and we'll run that flow all right so we completed it successfully and let me open up the email now and scroll over here so here here's our email that we got so Remember we had our item, our A0001, our location was bulk one, warehouse was 24, expected was 90, counted was 80. Here's our date and time that it was closed. Now, this is where the CSS comes in. You know, that's got the uh, the, the blue header and the gray, gray lines. Um, so that's where the CSS comes through on that, okay? So you see there that it's not too many steps in creating a flow. If you have the data entity there available, um, you could create really any report and email that or out or, you know, again, whatever you want to do with it in flow. Once you get in flow, you can, you can uh, notify the user any way you want. Okay. Now I would not use this for complicated reports. I'll, I'll admit, you know, if, if you're going to start joining tables and doing a really complex report, I would probably pretty quickly abandon this. But if it's just some, a quick, uh, kind of a notification or alert type report that you'd want just to kind of show the status of records. I think it's a great, great way to do it. Uh, again, it's no code. Didn't have to create an SSRS report and embed that into Dynamics. I just, you know, took me 30 minutes to write this flow and, and now it's, it's good to go, right? So very easy to write and, and do. Okay. So hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like, thumbs up. Um, that just helps me on the distribution of these videos and it helps more people see them. And put out a video about once a week, uh, once or twice a week. Uh, so if, if you like this content, please feel free to subscribe. Uh, you'll get notified when I upload a new video. Okay? So until next time, thanks for watching. I'll see you later. Bye.